the ROG Alloy and the ROG Alloy X. Actually, let me ask you guys. Do you say ROG Alloy or, you know, ROG for the Asus ROG platforms or ROG? Some people say ROG. I've actually most of the time been saying ROG. Just suddenly I've started, been starting saying ROG. But let me know in the comments. Okay, so the I'm going to call it ROG. So the ROG Alloy and ROG Alloy X especially and now the ROG Xbox Alloy, the ROG Xbox Alloy X very very powerful systems they can run a lot of emulators including ps3 to get really good performance in a ps3 emulator aka rpts3 there are optimal settings so i'm gonna run you through those first of all before we even get on to the emulator itself there's a few things that you can do on a you know a system level or on, or on the console level that will not only get you better performance in rpcs3 but in emulators and games in general so first of all if you press this the, the, the bottom button down here this will open up our little menu system and depending on what version you are on it might look a little different and because i know they've just recently updated it so first of all you want to make sure you're in turbo mode so that is 25 watt if you have the charging cable plugged in it'll say 30 watt it'll give you a slightly bit more performance or boost in power that can result in more performance but again you will be wired in at that time the other thing that we want to do is also open up the armory so if we click the bottom button here so open up armory crate you want to go to settings you want to go to performance and you want to go to gpu settings and in here for memory assigned to gpu select 8 gig uh, a 6 or 8 is you know a good sweet spot but 8 will get you really good performance overall or round okay so that's you know in terms of the system level now let's open up our pcs3 and look at optimal settings for the, the emulator so if we go to configuration cpu in cpu so you want to have a look at the my setting most of them will be default so this is what you'll want so the preferred spu threads leave on auto but if you are having some issues, you can try three or four. Certain games can benefit from that. And in GPU, the renderer sometimes is set to OpenGL. You want to set it to Vulkan. That will, hands down, get you the best performance. I doubt there's a game out there where it'll work better in something other than Vulkan. Next, for an, everything else, leave as is. You can leave an isotropic filtering and anti-aliasing as is and the default resolution the, there's different resolutions but the actual developers themselves don't recommend changing this they recommend leaving this and if you want to increase the resolution to make it look sharper you change the resolution scale you don't want to increase it on the you know the rug alloy or alloy x or X, the xbox rug alloys even though they're powerful they're not that powerful that you want to be increasing this some games you might not get the best performance so what you could do as a little hack is reduce this i mean 25 percent is probably going to be you know pushing it so between 50 and 75 percent for certain games uh, 100 percent works well for the resistance fall amount which i'm going to be trying but if you do lower it you can open up this menu again and you can enable amd rsr so this is just an upscaler but it's not game specific it's on the system level so if you lower the resolution just enable that next shader mode again you want you know what i've got generally speaking async multi-threaded however if you are getting some you know performance issues set it to async with shader interpreter and see how that works you may get graphical issues with async shader interpreter but it will generally get you better performance. So try you know, any of these two and see how it goes for you. And in audio low tip, make sure you have QB selected. That is the best audio out. And everything else we can just leave as is. In advanced, again, most of this, you'll just wanna leave it as is. But in the maximum number of spurs threads, 
what you want to do leave it as unlimited but if you have some issues try four or five i've seen that can also help as well another little tip if you go to gpu make sure vsync is off so those are the recommended settings those are a little few things that you can do i want to show you one other thing as well if you open up your web browser and yes i'm going to use edge even though it's rubbish and you just press x to go oh no not x for the keyboard i'm thinking of the steam deck here you just press it and you want to type in rpcs3 compatibility so this is very important you go to the compatibility list i'll provide a link in a pinned comment and here you can select your game so if i go to resistance fall of man Ooh, there's a lot of R's. Let me resistance. <laughs> Don't know appear. I know it does appear if you sometimes that this is another thing that I have noticed with the compatibility. If you don't type if you type it, see it appears, whereas if you type in resistance, it doesn't. So that's just something to bear in mind. So we'll go to the disk version. This will give you some particular settings that work really well for it. So they want the V blank rate to set 220, the drive, the driver wake up display to 50. And, it, you know, give you some settings in terms of highest recommended resolution based on available vram but you know this will probably be more for desktop so this is what i recommend have those general settings try them you can also go to the specific setting on the compatibility list it will let you know you know if it's playable you know how well it works the recommended internal resolution which most of the time will be 720p and then if there's any specific settings and how you, you don't want to set this specific setting up here in configuration because that's just for all games you want to go to your game which is resistance you want to right click and that's r2 or no is it we call r2 or right trigger yeah right trigger on these systems and then you want to go to change custom configuration or if i show you on here yeah change you can do yeah so change custom configuration and here you can actually change the specific settings and you just see, you know, which ones work well. Uh, I think it would be an advanced. Do, do, do. So driver, wake up, displace, set that to 50. And the V blank frequency was set to 120. So those were the recommended settings. So you've got your default settings. And now if I show you this particular game, which generally works well on the RP, RPCS3 emulator. I just had it in desktop mode, so you're wanting gamepad mode. Now, if I enable real-time monitoring, as you can see, we're getting 60 frames per second. Sometimes in heavy areas, it can dip down, but overall, we do get great performance. We've got to go through here. I'm clearly lost. Nope, we're gonna go down here. I think. Yeah, we can start getting loads of these enemies.
There we go. I am dead now. <coughs> End up pressing the arm crate. But as you can see, you know, great performance on the ROG Ally, ROG Ally X, and obviously on the Xbox version, you'll get slightly even better performance. So that is the RPC3 PS3 emulator. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. If you need help with a specific game, let me know. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell to be notified of future videos. And yeah, let's get emulating and let me know what the general content you would like to see next. I'll see you soon. And stay tuned for the Patreon page, which is coming very, very soon. See you soon. Bye-bye.